just get a little bit more dopamine in our system today. We're back with another episode of the Evolve Your Brand podcast. I'm your host, unconscious business coach, Dave Gold. And on today's episode, I've got one of my friends, mastermind members, and incredible breathwork and ice bath facilitator, Shani, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Dave. Happy to be here. Good to see you after a while as well. Yeah, man. It's been a few weeks. So first off, I would love to hear, you know, what's what's been going on in your world? You decided in 2022 to really crack down on your entrepreneurial dreams and take your coaching seriously, starting to host live ice baths and breathwork events in Portugal. And, um, you know, how did that all come together? Yeah. So I think midway through 2022, I kind of was came to a realization that my life, there was something more to it. Like I just couldn't carry on living the same day over and over again. And I think for a lot of people, like, I kind of had that thought a couple of times in the past, but I'd never really taken action on it. Like I thought maybe I'd start a coaching business. Maybe I'd start doing something, but I would start, but then not really follow through. But this year I decided it was different or last year. And I decided to take action on it and reaching out and really like going fully all into it. And it came from a calling of wanting to do more, but actually like, really reconnecting to my own story because I think a lot of my story of the struggles that I went through in the past I'd kind of brushed them over and I never really kind of considered the challenges that I overcame I, I just sort of thought that was normal and for for anybody else I would kind of look at them as like put them on a pedestal as like other coaches like they are superior and I need to be better in order to become a coach. And 2022 is when I finally looked in the mirror and was like, actually, I do have a lot of value to offer and I'm ready to step up and start offering that value to to the world. Beautiful. I definitely experienced something similar in 2020 where I had been traveling around the world been doing this business development work. It was super inspiring, but my coaching was just a hobby. And I always Mm -hmm. thought that, I'll never be this full-time coach that has this YouTube channel and a podcast and all this stuff. And I don't have the qualification. I don't have the experience to do it. And I sat and I looked in the mirror when the lockdown happened. I was like, well, actually I do. I've traveled around the world. I've connected with all these people. I've garnered all these experiences. People want to hear what happened. People want to learn from me. People want to experience what this lifestyle and this abundance is like. So what Mm. did you discover about yourself um, in terms of empowerment as you dove deeper into not only being um, a consumer and a follower, but a creator and a leader? Mm. I think that's a great question there because there's such a fine line between a consumer and a creator. And A lot of people, when we feel like, for me, especially when I was creating a few stories in the past and posting on Instagram once every three months, I never really looked at myself as a creator. Uh, But at the same time, I didn't see myself as a consumer. But I think once I became, once I finally like actually adopted the mentality of a creator and started to look at content from the perspective of, okay, what value can I offer rather than what validation can I get from this post? That was a big shift for me. And I ended up like archiving half my Instagram posts from the past, because when I looked at them, all I saw was a picture of me seeking validation. And with the likes that I got from it and the comments, uh, I just remember the feelings of those dopamine hits of validation that I got in the past. And, and, and that moment, it seemed kind of worthless, but It served a purpose at the time. And looking back, obviously, it's I see I see why I needed that validation. But then once you're able to give yourself that self-validation, then you don't need to seek it externally from Instagram posts or anything else. 
from validation to value, I think it's such an interesting topic because mm -hmm. um, it often is not necessarily correlated. There are creators like Mr. Beast who are creating solely entertainment value um, type content. And it, it, I guess it can teach a lesson about giving and receiving, um, which is actually really powerful. So, um, mm -hmm. so I'm kind of having an evolution right now in my train of thought, but at the same time, it's like, it's not an intellectual conversation about consciousness. And oftentimes mm -hmm. those conversations, they get lost in the weeds and people can't make it past five, 10 minutes of the Andrew Huberman podcast or Lex, Lex Friedman podcast without getting bored and wanting to jump back onto their Xbox or their Instagram or, mm. um, or you know, into the news and the sports or the drama. And so, you know, why is it that our world is so intoxicated by dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin? Um, mm. You know, what what is it that is is creating such an addiction to our smartphone? Mm. Yeah, well, I think the first thing is that these phones have been designed in that way. The purpose of the social media app is to keep you on as long as possible. So they will do anything in their power to keep you on. And the endless loop and the endless scroll is part of that. The algorithm that's custom designed to show you the next video that it knows exactly is on your mind because it's been watching your thoughts for the last 10 years. So it knows in this moment exactly the video you want to see and you'll click it because you're on that loop. So that's actually designed specifically to keep you there. But the other thing about dopamine, which is quite interesting, is that dopamine is the molecule for motivation, not for like actual validation or accomplishment. But we have it confused right now. So we kind of feel the dopamine hit when we receive the pleasure rather than the actual experience. And I feel like somebody who does this incredibly well, where it's like, if you follow David Goggins, he's somebody who experiences the highs from the process. And that's kind of the, the experience that I'm trying to cultivate within my own work now, where it's like, instead of looking for the outcome and only receive the dopamine at the outcome, it's kind of like experience the dopamine hit just from the process itself. Did you hear one of David Goggins' latest speaking gigs on a podcast where he was talking about how he's decided consciously to not continue doing endless podcasts and content creation? And he goes on this helicopter up in British <laughs> Columbia into the forest fires and for like, three, four, five, six days at a time, he'll be out with, um, you know, these packs, putting out the, putting out the forest fire, putting it out with water and, and with a, you know, small little like highly trained team of like ex special forces. And he doesn't make barely any money doing this. Yes. And he doesn't have his phone out there probably with like high speed internet or anything like that. You know, no comfortable bed, no, no, you know, nice little espresso and orange juice. Yeah. And it's like, why would you do such a thing? And I'm here right now in a very spiritual place. And I've been putting myself into sweat lodges that are really tough. When you get into like the third or fourth round of the sweat lodge, it is not easy. Some people leave, yeah. you know, some people can't make it through. I've been doing my first few ice baths. We're going to talk about that. And the first one I was shaking. And the second one, I picked it up. I went to five minutes, but it still wasn't right. easy. I, I have this, you know, adverse reaction to the cold, even though I do a little bit of cold showers. And it's like, why would we put ourselves through such pain if we don't have to? Yeah, and I think that's a great point as well, because the ice baths are a particularly good example of the key concept here. And it's that pleasure experience after pain is so much better. And it's like it heightens the pleasure and the dopamine release after an ice bath 
it's actually after an ice bath, your dopamine levels shoot up by like 200 to 500 percent. And that is because not because of the ice, but it's actually because of the pain that you experience during the ice bath. So any pleasure that you experience is incredibly a lot more. So this comes down to one key fundamental concept. And it's something that I'm kind of like following myself. And it's been what I've been pushing my coaching lately. And that is the idea of uh, instant gratification versus delayed gratification. So instant gratification activities, these are anything that feels good initially, you, you receive that initial spark of dopamine, but then over time it leads to a net negative. So it's like posting something on social media where it's like you post it and you feel a good hit initially, but then over time you don't feel anything or actually you feel worse. Whereas like delayed gratification is the opposite, where it's like a nice bath or a cold shower, you might feel some sort of like struggle at the start or it might like be a bit challenging, but then over time that leads to a positive experience and more of a positive feeling. And I feel like with David Goggins, he's somebody who lives in that zone. He lives in delayed gratification where it's like he suffers today so tomorrow feels better. And that's kind of, yeah, the direction I'm heading towards in my life is like, okay, let me let me look after the future version of me. Me from one year from now can look back at this moment and be proud of me. Because too many times in my life, I've been in a situation when I look back at the version of me from a year ago, and then he made a lot of decisions that I don't appreciate, like eating unhealthy food and not working out and smoking and drinking and all of these decisions that he made constantly, constantly that kind of affect me at this moment, where it's like, I want to be sitting here a year from now, looking back at all of the decisions I'm making right now as like, wow, I'm, I'm so glad and proud that you made those decisions. And that's kind of the direction of my life that I'm looking to head in. Well, and, how, how do you feel about how far you've come? If you were to go back one year from now, where were you on January 26th, 2022? Because, you know, I know for me around this time, I was sitting in an apartment in Portugal after I had just gone through a breakup and fired all of my top clients and, I was on my way to go through a deep healing journey in Ibiza, mm -hmm. doing Bufo and then traveling to St. Martin to really release and party and let go and meet up with all of my friends and former clients in the States. And like, if you had told me that everything would have played out the way that it did, it's just mm -hmm. remarkable how, how much has changed and how much I've experienced in the last year. So, you know, what happened to you? What are, do you feel proud of how far you've come over the last year? Oh yeah. Incredibly. Like I would not have even imagined that I'd taken the steps that I've taken over this last year. And it's funny you asked that because recently I, I posted a story on my Instagram and the story was uh, a note that I found on my phone. So like I made a note a year ago, and the note was, I wrote from like an honest perspective of what my purpose is, but based on the actions that I was taking at that moment. And it was like the, if like, if I made, if I'd take myself back a year ago, um, I was trying to come up with a purpose for myself. I was looking to search for my own purpose. And every time I tried to write down my own purpose, it always felt disingenuous. So then when I wrote, wrote down my actual purpose based on the actions I was taking, uh, some of the things were like, I, I, I just want to stay the same. I don't want to, I don't want to stand out. I don't want to be like seen. I want to hide in the crowd. I don't want to show myself. I would prefer to uh, completely change my situation without changing myself. And I was writing all these honest things about the actual purpose of the actions that the guy I was and looking back now at that person who wrote that it's almost a completely different person so yeah I feel well, like uh, you're, you're definitely a different person than the one that I went camping with and the one that I met in <laughs> Lisbon 
in 2021. Um, uh-huh. And, you know, I wanted to read a quote that uh, Wim Hof said. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about your opinion of Wim Hof as well. Um, he was talking about the Bhagavad Gita and he, and he said, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita, they say the mind under control is your best friend. The mind wandering about is your worst enemy. Make it your best friend to the point where you can rely on it. Your mind makes you strong from within. It is your wise companion. The sacrifice you make will be rewarded. Life doesn't change, but your perception does. It's all about what you focus on. Withdraw mm-hmm. from the word from the world's influence and no longer be controlled by your emotions. If you can grab the wheel of your mind, you can steer the direction of where your life will go. And I think that there's a lot that we could unpack just from those words, but for me, what really stood out was the sacrifices you make will be rewarded. And I've seen you make certain sacrifices, and I've made them too, that have been really scary to step into. You know, there's also a sacrifice about you know not staying small anymore and putting ourselves out there and sacrificing our privacy and our personal life to share our innate, authentic voice mm-hmm. with the world um but one thing about being in the ice bath which i thought was really interesting was after the first 30 to 60 seconds of trying to control the <laughs> the, the cold and like your your body's relationship with the cold once you completely let go and your mm. mind is is you know no longer wandering it can be at peace and you do this little nidra and everything really slows down and calms down Mm. to the extent that it's almost like a superpower when you're under pressure and as an entrepreneur i feel like we're put in these positions of being in intense situations in sales calls dealing with employees you know working with people um, one-on-one, getting onto podcasts and being asked difficult questions, right? So what have you done in in, in terms of making peace with your mind? Mm, Wow. Yeah, that's a beautiful quote as well. And I feel like it really captures it. Uh, Everything that you mentioned there about the ice bath as well. Uh, control is the illusion. It's like we feel like we can control things. So whenever we're in a situation and we're trying to like exert some level of control over it, we come to a realization eventually that letting go will give you more of actual control than any form of control you might try and have over the situation. And I feel like that's kind of, a lesson that I learned from the ice bath myself Uh, in terms of my own experience. I mean, cold showers are something that I just do as part of my regular routine now, and it becomes a normal part of life. Um, And when it comes to the wandering mind, I think one of the key things there is understanding how the mind's dopamine reward system works. And then more important is actually understanding your own system yourself because i feel like everybody has their own version of that like for me for example validation was a big thing and it was like digging deep to understand why am i seeking this validation externally why am i looking for validation from other people is it because i don't give it to myself and then once you unpack and get to the root cause of why you feel like you're seeking all of this externally then It becomes easier to to not seek it anymore. And then the way that I see it is like our mind uh, at a certain point, it's so scattered. It's like having a laptop open with a thousand tabs and there's always just like a little bit going off somewhere, a little bit of like, you know, some, some memory over here, some memory over there and just too many things open. So even things like falling asleep on time is difficult 
And I think that was something that helped me a lot was fixing my sleep and wake up schedule. Because now every day, like without fail, before midnight, I'm asleep and I wake up at like six o'clock. Just it, it just became a, a way of life. Whereas like in the past, uh, yeah, my sleep schedule was all over the place. And I feel like having these foundational things in your life, like some meditation, some breath work, cold cold water therapy, sleep, having all of these things aligned, they actually give you a foundation, a platform to then go on and build other things and start to look at ways to improve your your mind power and in, in other ways as well. Yeah, and I know as a coach and online business owner for the last few years, especially working in different time zones, it can be very difficult to sometimes you know, have that healthy sleep pattern. Let's say you've got a client on the West Coast in the United States or an employee in the Philippines, and either you need to wake up early or you need to stay up late and there's sacrifice involved. And, and you know, I think that um, the work that you're doing, it must be really impactful for a lot of entrepreneurs. So, so how exactly... You know, do you go about and um, helping others, and and who is it that you actually help? Yeah, so the main people that I'm looking to help are people who are looking to have some level of authority over their own mind and their emotions. So I feel like the mind and emotions are two things that are connected in this way, where it's like it becomes a feedback loop. And if your emotions are out of whack and then your mind is as well, but overall, this comes down to really not being aligned within yourself. Uh, it's all kind of connected through the breath. So breath work is a big part of it. But at the end of the day, it's like uh, when I was speaking earlier about the instant gratification versus delayed gratification, it's kind of shifting people from a lifestyle of seeking those instant pleasures and moving towards working on things that will bring you benefit in the long term. If that's like building your business, if that's working on your fitness, working on your health, improving your mental health, improving your mental state, um, anything that actually helps you improve in the future. And I think that's a big part of the work that I'm doing now is shifting people from one paradigm to another, let's say. That's the way that I see it. Yeah. So, and you have an app or, or how do you go about helping people to shift their paradigm or to, you know, quote unquote, escape the matrix? Because I saw your post and you talked about how the matrix is real and the algorithm's purpose is to keep you on the platform as much as possible. And the dopamine reward system is completely hijacking mm -hmm. your nervous system and holding you back from becoming the person and the potential that you're meant to become. But, you know, yeah. as, as Wim said, we can do more than what we think. It's a belief system that has been adopted and it's become a motto. There is more than meets the eye unless you are willing to experience new things. You'll never realize your full potential. So how is it? then mm. you're helping people to really experience their full potential in life shining. Yeah, I think that's the key thing there. It's, you mentioned the matrix is real. And a lot of people's like vision of the matrix is these people kind of like in the movie, these guys in suits who are here controlling the world and running things. But in reality, before you worry about this kind of external forces, the real matrix that people need to worry about is the one that's in their mind because their mind, if it's not fully working for them and it's not aligned, it's kind of going off in different directions. That is the real matrix right there. It's like these belief systems that are kind of controlling you that have been implanted in you since you were a child that you have no control over. You don't know why you feel unworthy, but you had this experience when you were four or five and that's kind of, colored your whole reality a whole different way and now it just becomes a way of life and for other people it's like uh, I think it's all just a process of removing so I think the way that I see it is 
as I've gone on my own journey in removing things within myself, I can help people to reach where I'm at from where I used to be. And the connection that I'm making is like sharing content and speaking to my former self. So when I look into the camera now, I feel like I'm looking at me from a few years ago and I'm talking directly to him. And it's like, if anybody resonates with that, it's because they are where I'm at, where I used to be at. So then if they resonate with me, they resonate with me because they are where I used to be. And then I can help them get to where I'm at now. Dude, the way you said that just now, it really painted the image of why coaching is so powerful because it's really basically you've seen someone who's a few steps ahead of you in the game. And instead of trying to feel in the dark and possibly fall backwards or in a direction that doesn't actually support you, to fall mm -hmm. forward with someone's help supporting you along that journey to get to where they are or even a place that's further ahead from where they are. I know some of my clients, you know, have actually surpassed the pace that I'm moving at in my own business and are making even more money or working with even more clients. Others are taking a longer time to actually catch up to the pace that I'm working at. But each of them are adapting and evolving with ways of being, communicating yeah. and creating that was a doubt before and is now a part of their identity. And I see that with you as well, with the content that you're creating on YouTube, on Instagram. Guys, go follow him, Inspire with Shani. Is that correct? Inspire with Shani? Yeah, that's, that's right. Because until you actually go and start putting yourself out there and taking full ownership of your name, of your brand, of your mission, and of your message, mm -hmm. it's only just a pipe dream. And when you go and you start to put yourself out there, don't think that it's going to be necessarily easy. But I want to ask you this final question. What has been the biggest challenge, yet the most fulfilling reward from deciding to commit to being an inspiration for others? Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's a great question. I think for me, the biggest challenge was the honesty of actually being myself and I felt like at a certain point I felt like I needed to put out a front or be a version of me that was acceptable for people to see and then when I actually genuinely shared like my true story of what I went through when I went when I was 20 years old and I had like this depression for some years and was going through a rough time where my mind was just kind of overloaded with negative thoughts and my habits were just like so bad. I'd wake up every day and in the afternoon, play video games all day and then smoke weed until the night. And then that was it. That was just my day in existence. Uh, I got to a point where I actually tried to take my own life at the age of 20. And I shared that story um, on Facebook and on Instagram. And I had so many people reach out to me after that, like, probably hundreds of people reach out to me and some of them talked about their own story of going through something similar. And for me, that's the thing that made me worth it. It's like, I didn't create that story or to share it for anybody else, but myself, because I just needed to put it out there because I was finally at a place where I could actually start talking about it. And then as soon as I did that, I had people reaching out to me and saying, Oh, thank you for sharing because it, it allows me to share about my own story. And then they told me about their story and, some of the struggles that they went through. So I think that was for me, the most fulfilling and rewarding part of it. There is just such a power and beauty in being unapologetically your most vulnerable self. Mm. And I will say that if there are people listening to this that struggle with connecting, especially connecting with people in a deep level, if you really want to practice opening up and sharing things that might seem uncomfortable or scary to share with a stranger that you don't know so well, you practice doing that over and over and over again, 
you're going to see that not only are you going to get more comfortable and vulnerable and authentic, but that people are going to want to be around you more. They're going to want to trust you more and they're going to like you more because they feel your honesty and your integrity, your authenticity. And before we leave on, I'm wondering if you want to ask the audience a powerful question or give them a challenge moving forward into February. Hmm. Yeah, I think one of the biggest challenges that I've used myself to level up was to really become honest with how I'm using my time and adapting a frame of mindfulness, like moment to moment in terms of my usage of my time in, in, and in relation to my direction and purpose. So I want people to be honest and ask themselves, is the way that they spent this previous week in line with their goals that they've set themselves? And if not, is there something that they can change or what, what can they remove or add from their day or life based on where it is that they're looking to go and how they've just spent the previous week? So what is it that you can add or remove from your life that's going to help you to get into alignment with where you want to go? Guys, if you need help with that, working one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting with a mentor, Shani is your man. Reach out to him. Follow him on Instagram, on YouTube, at Inspire with Shani. And you guys know where to find me, at Dave Gold Evolve. It's been an absolute pleasure to work with you, to connect with you, to learn from you, and to have you on the podcast today. So enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and we'll see you in the next episode. Peace. Peace.